Today, I'm going to show you how I created this animating article card. I'll show you how I defined the HTML structure and how I use CSS Grid and Flexbox to create this design. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the page, I have a head tag with several links I'm going to use throughout the project. The first link is for a Google font, and the second link is actually for Font Awesome, which we will use later on in the project. Beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. And then in the CSS, I added a preprocessor of SCSS, and I declared several variables in the root and added some basic styling, like setting the box sizing set to border box. In this video, I'm going to show you the full coding tutorial from beginning to end. So to get started, I'm going to jump into the HTML. So within the body, first, I'm going to make a div with a class of card. And so I'm going to place all the code for each card within this div. Then I'm going to create two other containers within this div. One of them will be called card body, and the other one will be the call to action at the bottom of the card. The reason why I'm setting it up in this way is because I want the top area, the card body, to always be at the top of the card, and then I always want the link to be at the bottom of the card. And so I don't know exactly how large each card will be because it's dependent on the content within the card. So that's why I'm separating it out into these two sections. Now I don't have these other pages defined yet, so for right now I'm just going to include a hashtag. Then within that card body, I'm going to include several elements. So the first element will be an image and it will have a class of card image. The second item in here will be an H2 tag with a class of card title. And this will represent the name of the article. And then I'm also going to include a paragraph tag with a class of card description. So this is the underlying structure for each card. So now I'm going to duplicate it several times and add realistic content so that way we can see something on the screen. So now we can actually see realistic content on the page, but we have to do quite a bit of work in terms of styling and also making these images look a bit better. So this is actually all of the HTML that we will need for the project and everything else will be completed within the CSS. So within the CSS, I have some basic styling already defined. For the body, I'm initially going to set a margin to two REM. And for the layout of this page, I'm actually going to use CSS Grid. If you're brand new to Grid, I have a whole crash course video that goes over all the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. Now for this grid, I want it to be fully responsive without using any media queries. So I'm going to apply a certain styling for the grid template columns. For the columns, I'm going to set it to a repeat auto fit with a min max value. Now, if this is brand new to you, I have a whole crash course video that goes over this specific topic, so I'll link that video in the description below as well. What this is basically saying is, I want the number of columns that are visible on the page to fit the size of the window, and then for each column, I want to set it to a minimum of 16 REM and a maximum of 0.3 FR. And for this grid, I'm also going to include a gap of 2 REM. And then I'm also going to justify the content in the center. So now that we have all of the body code defined, I can start working on each individual card. So first I'm going to reference the class of card. And for this card, first I'm going to set the overflow to hidden. And then I'm going to add a border around each card. So that way we can clearly see where each card begins and ends. So now we can see the bounding box for each card. And then to add a cool effect, I want to apply a particular box shadow for each card. So I actually want it to be a hard shadow without any blur. 
So I'm going to add a box shadow that has an X and Y direction without any blur. Then for each card, I want the internal elements to have a display of flex. That way I can control exactly how I want the content to flow. So for each card, I'm going to write display flex. And then I'm going to set the flex direction to column. This really doesn't appear to have any effect with the card, but if I increase the size so that way we can see multiple cards at the same time, you'll be able to see the difference. So you can see that when cards are placed side by side, they are exactly the same height. But the way the content flows right now is that all of the content is at the top of the page. Well, I want to control it because I always want this view article button to always be pinned to the bottom of the card. So right now this image is very large, so it's pushing all this content down quite a bit and the article link is placed right here, but the other article link is not placed right here. So to always ensure that the link is at the bottom of the card, I'm going to set the justify content to space between. Now the link will always be at the bottom of the card. Then to make each card look interactive, I'm also going to set the cursor to pointer. And I know I'm going to want to add certain animation effects, so I'm going to add a transition here for the border and box shadow property. So this is all the basic code for the card, and now I'm going to stay within that card class to add the other styling. So within that card class, first I'm going to apply styling for the actual image, so that way they all look a bit better on the page. So I'm going to write and image. And for this image, I'm going to set the height to 12 REM. I'm going to set the width to span 100%. And then as you can see, we clearly have a bit of distortion with the images and it's because we're controlling both the height and the width and ignoring the aspect ratio. So to improve that, I'm going to set the object fit to cover. That way the images retain their original aspect ratio. Then I'm just going to apply some styling for the text. So I'm going to say and title. And then I'm just going to add some padding of one REM. For the description, I'm going to also add some padding. And then I'm going to do quite a bit of work for the link. So here I'm going to write and link. First, I want to remove that underline, so I'm going to write text decoration none. I'm going to set some padding. I'm going to set the font weight to bold. I'm going to set the color to the primary color in the project. And then after each link, I want to include an arrow that will animate backwards and forwards when the user is over each card. So in order to do that, I'm going to add an after pseudo element. So here I'm going to write and after. And for this pseudo element, I'm actually going to use a font awesome icon. So if this is new to you, I have another tutorial that goes over how to add font awesome icons as pseudo elements. So I'll link that video in the description below as well. What I'm essentially doing is that for this pseudo element, I'm including the actual ID for the icon and then referencing the font family of font awesome. So that way we can actually see that icon right here. If you don't want to use pseudo elements, you can just add the icon in the HTML, but I prefer to do it like this. That way all of them are consistent. Great. So now the cards look pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is add all of the hover effects and animations. So still within that card class, I'm going to add a hover. So I'm going to write and hover. And for this hover, I want to change the actual border and this box shadow to a different color. So I'm going to go back up here and take this border and this box shadow. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste it for the hover statement. But I want to change certain qualities about it. So here, instead of it being the gray, I'm going to change it to the primary color. And then I also want to intensify this box shadow a bit. So instead of it being four pixels, I'm going to make it eight pixels and eight pixels. So now if I hover over it, I'm expecting there to be a color change for the border and the box shadow and I hover over it and we can see that cool effect. Next, I want to add a hover effect for the arrow icon. So beneath that hover, I'm going to add another statement. I'm still going to reference the hover state, but instead of it affecting the card, I want it to affect that particular icon. So I'm going to reference the link. So I'm going to write and link. And then I want it to change the after pseudo element. So then I'm going to write after. 
And for this after property, I want to apply a keyframe animation for this actual arrow. So here I'm going to write animation. I'm going to call this animation arrow. It'll take place in one second with an ease in out curve. It will play infinitely and it will be alternating, which means it will play backwards and forwards. So then completely outside of that card class, I'm going to create that keyframe animation. So I'm going to call and keyframes. And then I'm going to call the name for the animation called arrow. And this animation will be pretty simple. I'm just moving it in the X direction. So at the 0% mark, I'm going to set the left value to a particular value. And then at the 100% mark, I'm going to set the left to another value. So what this is basically saying is that when this card is in the hover state, I want to activate this animation for this after pseudo element. I want this animation to take place in one second with an ease out curve, and I want it to play infinitely. Now, instead of the animation always going from zero to 100 and then back to zero, I want it to alternate. So that way it goes from zero to 100 and then 100 back to zero. So let's see what happens. I hover over the card and the arrow actually animates. So there you go. That's how I created these article cards using only HTML and CSS. So just to go over what I did, in the body tags, I included a card element and I followed the BEM model to lay out the structure of the HTML. I included a card body, which included the image, the title, and the description. And then I also included a link at the bottom. For the body, I laid out the content using CSS grid, and then for each card, I used Flexbox to lay out the content. I applied styling for the image and all the text so that way it looked a bit better on the page. And then for the icon, I used a font awesome pseudo element. And then I added some cool hover effects by manipulating the border and the box shadow. So there you go. That's how I created these article cards using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.